which means shit to people, and we're the bastard child of the healthcare system. Decades have come and gone, and still the government hasn't any wisdom. The only list we make it to the top of is the one that lists the funding cuts. And every door that we knock on is just one more that someone shuts. You work overtime but don't get paid, and there's no guarantee you'll keep your job. And it doesn't matter how hard you work, it's only criticism that the funders log. Addiction counselors are seen as distasteful as the population that we see. And even though it's the most destructive health issue, we still have to beg on hand and knee. Actually, we wouldn't even make it to the list because our clients' problems are seen as self-imposed. We excuse the behavior that leads to heart problems, cancer, and diabetes. But addiction ensures the door is closed. We'll defend the right to drink with impunity, but don't cross the line into addiction because everyone can just drink socially. So really, no one has this affliction. Because after all, the government makes good money, taxing alcohol, tobacco, and gambling. If you try to lobby for more money for addiction, they'll just see it as worthless rambling. The next money maker on the list is the move to legalize recreational use of pot. We don't care that it hijacks the minds of our adolescents and it's a trap in which they'll get caught. Again, it all comes down to choice, and bad choices won't earn you any consideration. After all, if they decide to legalize pot, we all know it's just for recreation. So one more kid gets derailed by psychosis, too paranoid to realize that it's help he needs, too blinded by the story of pot safety and the ongoing addiction that it feeds. And then we'll just dismiss them as one more person exhibiting bad behavior. And in this, in this country, if you have addiction, your only hope is a divine savior. And if you work in an addiction field, you might as well be just an addict on the street, because the only thing this profession gives you is one more lesson in defeat. We're not considered to be trained and educated professionals with anything to offer mental health treatment, even though they're now appropriating our treatment methods and claiming they're the creators of their achievement. But the biggest travesty is the lost life of the many addicted just kicked to the curb. And what's even so often so much sadder is that their loss of life has no power to disturb. Those who are addicted have lost the right to be treated as a human being, but the behaviors they exhibit while intoxicated do not reveal the person you are seeing. That person is buried deep inside, along with the pain they couldn't find a way to heal, a ball of very painful emotions that their drug use allows them not to feel, because we don't have the funding or the resources to heal the children raised without a parent's care, so they're sentenced to a lifetime of pain and hurt, because this world just isn't fair. We know that truth because we've listened to the stories you don't want to hear of children raised in darkened homes where all they learned is what to fear. Addiction passed from one generation to the next because there never is an intervention. A heartless society raised on lies that tell them that the notion of addiction is just an addict's invention. The ugly finger of morality allows them to throw the addicted to the dirt, but there's nothing moral about society that leaves people stranded in their hurt. Hurt that they have had a part in when they leave children lost and then neglected because the addicted are the victims of the indifferent society is reflected. And they have become a scapegoat for all the inaction that we choose and then fail to become honest enough to admit we set them up to lose. We see them intoxicated and assume they overuse their drugs by choice, but that is just another way that we successfully rob them of their voice. We should be viewing their intoxication as a symptom of their illness, not ensuring that their lives end in a deathly stillness. Who are you to sentence the wounded to a life without any care? What kind of humanity do you demonstrate when all you do is stand and stare? Do you honestly think that anyone would willingly choose the life of the addicted? Can't you see the damage that it's doing leaves them with a life that is restricted? Intoxication is an escape from the pain of daily living. It's the consequences of a world that will never be forgiven. Addiction causes more pain than relief, but it's a trap in which they're caught. They were looking for a way to heal their pain, but it's only more misery that they bought. But the dealer was the only person offering some measure of relief. When the health system never responded, it was in them they lost belief. So what option did we give them when we left them caught in a traumatic nightmare? What were they supposed to do when all the doors they knocked on didn't care? You believe they could have found some other way because other people do. And that's the lie you tell yourself to take the blame for them off you. 
There were only so many spots available in the health system unable to meet their need. They're focused on the wealthy who never have enough to meet their greed. The addicted are the many that have only fallen through the cracks. They're the ones we blame when we place the addiction on their backs. <laughs>